Now, it's definitely a lemur, but is it a ring-tailed or a red ruff? Oof. Oh, hi, Earth Rangers. Earth Ranger Emma here. Didn't realize I accidentally hit the broadcast button. But you know what? It might actually be nice to have some company. I'm in the midst of a long train ride to hit the next national park for my Ultimate Guide series. And no, I'm not going to tell you what park is up next. You'll find out soon enough. But. Since I happen to have a whole compartment to myself, and I was able to set up my handy mobile sound editing system, I'm using this time to go through some field recordings I took last year. That I didn't do the greatest job labeling. Or at all. Okay, I know, I know, I know, I know. Not the greatest scientific method, but in my defense, sometimes things get hairy in the field. And I really did mean to label them last year before I left to search for Adelia, and then again when I got back, then I left again and I traveled all throughout the US, but it, better late than never, right? Right. Okay, I'm just gonna get these sound files from my email. Oh no, I just made the mistake of opening my email inbox. I definitely have to sort through all of my work emails and, and label all of the recordings I meant to edit. It's getting a bit overwhelming and hey, number one specifically told me to take things easy and relax. So. I decided to finally take on the recordings, and it's really testing my animal knowledge. But I think I'm working through it okay. Like this one? This one is a bale of box turtles. And this one is a siege of sandhill cranes. This one? It's a glint of goldfish. They don't really make much sound. That said, there is one that's giving me a bit of trouble. Hmm, maybe you could help me with it. Let's play Who Am I, but on expert mode. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> Ready? Here it is. Any guesses? Okay, I'll play it again. If you guessed anything, you're doing better than me. I mean, I do have some theories, and there are a couple of clues. Like, I think I can hear waves clapping against the shore in the background. So, I think what we're dealing with is a marine animal, but it doesn't sound all blubby like a fish. And it doesn't sound, you know, squawky and bird-like, and, and there's no blowhole sounds that I'd expect to hear if it was a whale. Which makes me think that what we're dealing with is a pinniped of some sort. I just can't be sure which one. Oh, <laughs> I should explain. A pinniped is the scientific name for the family of marine mammals that includes seals, sea lions, and walruses. Walri? No, walruses. I don't think it's a walrus, because they bellow. And it's not quite intense as a sea lion's bark. See what I mean? So, really, that just leaves seals. But which kind of seal? I can't quite remember the project I was working on when I took this recording, but I found it beside my guidebook for California, and I wrote the word spotty on the label. Hmm. A spotty is not a kind of seal. But. <gasps> There is a type of seal that's spotted, and it lives along the California coastline. The harbor seal. I think I want to tell you my five most favorite facts about the harbor seal. I promise, they're worth the extra time. Number one. Okay, I know I said that they're incredible swimmers, but I really, really mean it. They are incredible swimmers. They can dive up to 1,640 feet to hunt and swim. That's deeper than the Central Park Tower is tall. Number two, they can hold their breath for up to 30 minutes. They usually only dive for three minutes at a time, but when they go underwater, they can slow their heart rate down to just 10 beats per minute. So they require very little oxygen. That's a breathtaking adaptation if you ask me. Number three, their eyes. Their eyes are covered in a thick mucus. Yeah, 
just like the stuff in your nose. But these boogers keep their eyes safe and clear to stay open in salt water. Pretty cool. Number four, they're able to close their ear openings to protect their inner ear and make themselves more hydrodynamic. That means able to move well in the water. Now, you think this might affect their hearing, but they can actually hear 14 times better underwater than on land. And finally, number five. They have incredibly sensitive whiskers called vibrizzers. These adorable snout protrusions allow the seals to sense vibrations in the water. They use them to track the movement of fish long after they're out of sight. They also kind of make them look like puppies. <laughs> Speaking of puppies, can I give you one more cool fact? Baby seals are actually called pups. And believe it or not, that's not the only thing they have in common with dogs. They're cousins. Well, I mean, distant cousins like a gajillion times removed. Both groups are descended from an ancient subgroup of carnivores called Canifornia. It's the same family we have to thank for weasels and bears. <sighs> Mystery solved. I think I'll spend the remainder of my train ride enjoying the scenery. Maybe I can even squeeze in a quick power nap because I already know I'm going to need a lot of energy to experience everything my next national park destination has to offer. Spoiler alert, it's going to be epic. Well, until then, thanks for listening and keep on ranging.